Hey, I'm Seth Johnson with Land House. Thank you so much for joining in. Today, I'm gonna to be starting up the hydraulic ram pump series for 2020. If you're not familiar with the hydraulic ram pump, it is a water pump that requires no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. So, let me show you the state of my ram pump here in the creek. Now, if you're wondering why I have one of these, it's um, to water my garden and also to do lots of ram pump testing this summer. I've got uh, 34 video ideas written down so far for the ram pump. So let me show you what it looks like and we're gonna be getting this thing up and running and uh, cleaned up because I left it out here in the creek all winter long and it got uh, pretty trashed. So let's take a look at it. First of all, here's the pump itself. You can see there are some racket balls floating in the tank here. Those were my last tests that were done. We'll be cleaning that out and putting a bicycle tube back in there. Need to clean up all the debris around here. And uh, also, if you follow the delivery pipe, it's this half inch poly that goes up here. It came loose during the winter time and has been flowing nonstop here into this little puddle for uh, the entire winter. So you can see the output right there. So I wanna attach this back to the other side over there. Now let's walk up here to the bucket intake. The bucket, ouch, ow, 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 <laughs> that hurt. Probably should be wearing shoes, but I've got sandals on. Okay, so yeah, the uh, delivery pipe goes up that way. The ramp pump needs to be cleaned out. We'll be following the drive pipe up here, and that goes up to a bucket which does two things. It allows a air-free intake and also uh, catches a good bit of sediment and silt. So you can see my drive pipe comes out here about four to six inches above the bottom and that catches silt. Uh, I have a feeling we've caught silt up to here, which is a lot. Uh, feeding into this bucket is water from up the creek again. The flow is too low, we're gonna have to go clean that out. I've also got a little, ex oh yeah, look at all that silt. I've got an extension piece that will bring this down into the bucket so it won't have all this air bubble issue that's going on. Okay, so let's follow this up the creek here and I'll show you what the intake looks like. We will also have to clean that out. See how cold this March water is. Yep, it's pretty cold. So ideally, I would have a larger pipe than a one inch, feeding a one inch pump, but that's what I've got currently. Let's see, where's our intake? <laughs> okay, the intake is under all of this sediment and silt right here. So you can see right there, it goes into that. So. We've got a lot of work to do to clean this out as well. After we get all this cleaned up down here, we'll head up to the top of the hill and work on our tanks and see what the pressure is down at the garden. I wanna know, uh, I've got a pressure gauge that I'll be using to see uh, how much drop we have because I've got some fun ideas for garden watering this summer. Okay, I brought a shovel down here. I'm just gonna see if I can't throw some of this silt out of the way so we can access the pump. Okay, you might not be able to see much of a difference, but I've cleaned out a good bit around the pump. We'll wait for some of this uh, silty water to settle, and I'll show you that a little bit closer. But let's go ahead and walk up here to our bucket and work on that next. So water comes in from up the stream through this pipe here, goes in here and deposits silt, and the drive pipe pulls an air-free water out to the pump. And this 90 here takes the excess water and puts it into the flume. But I'm thinking it's going to be easier to clean this out when there's water in here. So let's actually move up the creek even more and clean that out first. I'm pretty much standing on the intake, which means it's pretty dirty. So I'm just going to start off by cleaning up these sticks that are here.
Okay, and then I guess I will just begin digging this out here. We've had a whole bunch of rain this winter so far, and it has definitely piled up a lot of silt. I have several rocks stacked up here that kind of make a little dam. I'm gonna pull those aside and hopefully it'll wash a lot of this silt out of here. Okay, starting to see these pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull them up and try to dig out a little bit under them and also get the silt and stuff that's stuck into that screen. Now I'm gonna put these rocks back here to bring this little dam back up. We should be good to go for a while on this one. And there we have it. The intake is now clean enough and we've got a little rock dam here to keep the water in. That should be more than enough to get us going for the next couple of weeks. Now that I have the intake clean, it's time to get this flowing at full capacity. So I'm gonna pick this up to where it stops flowing, let the water build up for a second, and then drop it down here to the ground and let it uh, pull the siphon. There's also gonna be a bunch of air in here. While that's pulling the siphon, I've got this old ball valve that's busted. I thought it would be great to extend this here. So I'll go ahead and put this on here. What was happening was bubbles were entering into the system through uh, this right here, and it was really causing issues. All right, that's the flow rate I was trying to find there. So I'm gonna let this fill the bucket, but down here on the bottom, I have got a drain plug that I'm gonna pull and hopefully be able to get this thing rain. There we go. That'll help out. Okay, we have success. The bucket is now clean. Now you can see a lot of air is bubbling out of that drive pipe. We're gonna have to work with that here in a bit, but I like this. I think that extension on the supply line is going to help not to introduce those bubbles in there. I guess we'll find out here in just a bit. Let's let it cover up there. Yeah, see, the bubbles are much reduced, so that's perfect. Just what we were going for. Cool. All right, before we can get the pump started, we need to reconnect this delivery line that goes up the hill. So I want to uh, this time use one of these hose clamps. This little leak probably saved the pump from breaking over the winter time, but it's all good. We've had such a crazy mild winter this year. I was hoping to do some cold weather ram pump testing, but didn't really have the time or the, the chance. It's finally time to step down here to the pump and get it working. I anticipate that the drive pipe here has a bunch of silt stuck in it. So I'm just going to use this stick to hold open the waste valve here and let that silt come out for a while. Oh yeah, nice and brown. All right, I think we're now clean enough to go. 
So I have to build up some back pressure in the delivery pipe. And I'm just going to click this a few times and it's going to fill up that line. You can also see the water rise up here in the pressure tank. If this is your first time viewing the channel, if you would subscribe and ring the notification bell. I have over a thousand videos on the channel and lots of content on the way. If you're also unfamiliar with the ram pump, let me kind of explain what's going on here. So first we had a supply line that brought water to a bucket. The bucket is acting kind of like a standpipe, but also it um, removes the air from the drive pipe and also catches some silt. A pipe comes down and drops about seven feet to the pump. The pump has two moving parts. A stainless steel waste valve, which is just a swing valve with the flap hanging down. And there's also a secondary valve, which is hard to see up under the water here. That goes into a pressure tank, which then goes through a delivery pipe uphill. So what happens is water comes down and slams this valve closed. It then shoots a pressure wave back up the pipe and also into that secondary valve. When that happens, a negative happens here and the valve swings open once again. So it's just a constant back and forth water hammer. And you can see the kind of water it's moving here with each cycle. It's a three inch pipe, about two inches of space there is being sent up the delivery pipe, way up the hill to the storage tanks. So, now that the pump is working like it should, and it's clean enough to get by with, let's head up the hill and I will show you the storage tanks. I completely forgot to film the water tanks in my video, and now it's a few days later, a, a crew of guys are over here chopping down some trees. So, but let's talk about the storage tanks here of the ram pump system. So, as I said before, my delivery pipe comes up the hill and it circles around my tower post down here and it comes up into this lower portion down here. If you listen, you can hear the ram pump cycling. So that comes up here through a non-return valve goes here and then enters into the bottom of the tanks. Now this confuses a lot of people and uh, let me explain why I have done this here. So when you fill from the bottom of a tank, the water will slowly rise across all of these tanks equally, makes a water level. If I were to take this same pipe and fill from the top, it would have to have that column of water from the top all the time. So that extra three feet would always be weighing down on the pump. When you fill from the bottom, it doesn't have that extra height already. It just slowly makes that as it goes up. That may be a confusing explanation, but in other words, it's faster to fill from the bottom than the top. So it will equal out all across there. On the back side of the tank, I have got an exit pipe coming out of the middle one here. Uh, it just keeps the water from overflowing in the top of the tanks. Comes out here, spins around, and let me show you that output here. I've never actually tested to see how much water I've got filling these tanks, but you can see it's a pretty decent bit flowing out there. Now, the gravity feed down to the garden comes out of this pipe right here. I have a shut off I could use uh, but it comes down here and then gravity feeds all the way back down to the garden. The creek is way over here and we're halfway up my hill. You can see my delivery pipe coming up here. It goes under my culvert and up the hill to my storage tanks. We'll check that out here in a bit. But I have two places where I'm going to be using the water. One is right here. I'm going to go ahead and close this off. So now the water is going to be coming only through this right here, which I just recently buried. Comes over here to my garden fence. 
and this is where I intend on using the water the most here in my garden. So I've got a pipe that comes up right here and I'm going to be using this here in my little garden space but what I want to do is connect my pressure gauge here when the water starts to flow a bit and then we will be able to see what the height is from this point to the top of the hill. I'm assuming somewhere around 15 to 20 foot of drop. That'll just give us the PSI rating to see what kind of um, watering tools we can use here in the garden. Yeah, I've given this thing about uh, 15 minutes and uh, let me see if I can zoom in here so you can see what's going on. Got a bit of a, uh, a blur there. Okay, so you can see the 20 in there and there's three lines, so it's five per line, and we're slightly over the middle one. So I'm guessing we have somewhere around 11, maybe 12 PSI in there. Oh, there you go, that's a better angle. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let the air out of here and see if that alters it any. Okay, I capped off this end that is right over here and came to this side because it has this nice handle. So we're at zero right now, and if I go ahead and flip this, it pops up to the same point, which is somewhere around the 11 or 12 PSI. Uh, not quite to that next line there, which is 15. So let's say we have 11 PSI down here at the water outlet. Uh, 11 PSI uh, divided by 0.433 equals 25 and a half feet of head pressure. That's the drop that is from the tanks up here to where we're gonna be using our water. Pretty cool. So with 11 PSI, there's a lot of stuff I can do when it comes to watering the garden down here. Uh, I actually have a couple of fun projects coming up with some sprinklers, so definitely stay tuned. With that being said, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I have a whole bunch of ram pump videos on the way this spring and summer. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. On a side note here, I let it sit until the tanks were full, and now we have almost 20 PSI. So, whenever the tanks are full, we should have enough pressure to do a lot of work watering our garden down here. Really cool. I like this a lot.